Now, when you're on a big road trip like this, it, it, it's pretty much impossible to avoid eating fast food. So we're going to go into Mary Brown's chicken taters. So, of course, I had the Big Mary crispy chicken sandwich and Amanda had fries because, well, she's a glutard. The question is, was it any good? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was good. So that's, uh, that's a good score for uh, Mary Brown's. I quite enjoyed that. Tasters. Yeah, where are you going? <laughs> You're around the other side, mate. And so began yet another long road trip. Right, so we're about whoa, 10 minutes from sunset and Alex just sent me a pin for a spot where there's some nice icebergs and some nice scenery in the background. But I don't think I'm going to make it before the sun sets. So I'm a, a bit... I'm a bit stressed out right now and I don't want to speed or go fast because there's signs everywhere telling you to watch out for moose and we've seen moose. I've actually seen a, a caribou. I don't know if it was a caribou or a reindeer. Anyway, I want to rush but I'm, I'm not gonna. It's just not worth the risk. But maybe I'll get there just after the sun's gone down and I might get 20 minutes of usable light with the camera in the sky. But there's a moose right there. Yeah, that's a big one. If you don't sh pants before you get there. I'm desperate for a plop as well. So I'll get there five minutes before sunset and then I'll have to go in the camper and do some business. That's just how it goes on the road. Well, we finally arrived at Alex's pin, but I cannot express to you how bloody cold it was. Iceberg cold. Well, I've got to give it to the old uh, Iceberg Finder website. This is, well, basically this is Iceberg Alley right here. I can see at least five or six fairly big icebergs. So I've blown it in terms of the light today. I just came too late, but I'm quite excited about what's available because there's one massive, absolute massive berg that's out there. And each day there'll be a bit that falls off and it'll get a bit more interesting. So I think I've probably got content for the next two or three days. I hope you like iceberg videos. was a bit late to the party. I was really excited to be this close to some picturesque icebergs. But do me a favor and bosh that like button to help this video get seen. All right, I think it's time to get me tripod out. So I was just driving down the road, looking for somewhere to park up for the night and drove right through what I think is a quintessentially Newfoundland scene. I've got icebergs in the background mountains and a fishing shack to top it all off i've got almost a full moon have a look at this business so i don't know if this shot's going to work uh, but it's a nice little blue hour shot if i can get it to work if things line up so this fishing shack's just over here see this little island so i think i'm going to try and put that slap bang in the middle and then get that lovely backdrop with those two icebergs and the full moon oh my god it's so cold right i better show you this shot before this cloud comes in and blocks the moon it's actually quite nice so i'll just brighten things up a little bit so you can see what i've got so here's that fishing shack on this little island and behind it you've got this mountain and you can just see these two icebergs it's actually three icebergs off to the left and the moon directly above the fishing shack slap bang in the middle so I'm going to take this shot, I'm going to underexpose it so I can retain that detail in the moon. And then I'll take another shot that's brighter for everything else so that I can blend the two together and get it exactly how I want it. So I'll take one at the correct exposure and those two together should be the perfect shot. Anyway, if this shot turns out to be any good, here's a shot. Oh. 
All that was left to do was pack up the camper and steal a few hours of sleep before sunrise in five minutes time. But one of us is not an early riser. What are you doing? Going for real coffee this morning. Why did you, did your crap coffee run out? No. Well, why are you drinking real coffee then? My crap sleep happened. Why, why is that? Because you wake up real early. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I woke up at six. Yeah. Sunset's not till nine. It's a big gap, my dear. Just not having it today. Sorry for waking up. Now, for you viewers, uh, this is not recommended to have a jet boil working indoors, even though that is how we make coffee every single day. But you know, I'm, I've got to put that in here, haven't I? Just, just in case someone blows themselves up and it's my fault. It's not my fault. Don't, don't do this. So on today's iceberg hunt, I'm going to guess that it's a bit like storm chasing for those people that do storm chasing. and. You'll see an iceberg, and then the next morning it's either gone, disintegrated, or, or it's just moved to a different spot. So one of the ones that we spotted last night, a fantastic one, has, it was almost beached in this cove, and I looked out this morning, and there's just litter everywhere, and it's gone. So I sent the drone out to find it, and I found it, but the problem is, once the drone goes around a corner, you've lost contact, and you can't really do anything, and it starts to come back. So what you have to do then is get back in the car once you know where it is and then try and find a road that takes you to a spot where you've got a clear line of sight. So that's what we're doing now, we're just driving around aimlessly trying to find how to get closer to this iceberg. But while I was out in the ocean, I could see another huge monster way off in the distance. So I'm also interested in trying to get to that one as well. But. I don't know if the roads even get as close. I guess I should have checked Google Maps before I headed off, but it's looking like it's going in the right direction, so we might be all right. Many of these icebergs come all the way from the glaciers of Greenland. Some of these massive chunks of ice are up to 10,000 years old, only to crumble and dissolve on the shores of Newfoundland's coves and harbors, now known as Iceberg Alley. with you I got way too close to some of these icebergs especially this one dare I do this <laughs> I was touching cloth there but this point the drone was six kilometers out to sea so it was time to recharge its batteries and ours all right so we've had a, a lovely lunch and now we're back on the trail we've gone back to where we started this morning and uh, it's foggy now, which cha it's changes everything. It makes it look so much more moody and ethereal. So I'm gonna get parked up and fly out to this fairly, fairly close one. It's all kind of rounded at the top. Not the most impressive one, but it's the one that's closest to the harbor. And you've got the mountains in the background all wreathed in mist. I could send it out further, but I don't trust not getting it back because I can't see, because it's foggy, but this one's close enough that I think I can find my way back. So I'm quite excited about this. Just have a look at all this absolute gorgeous mistiness. Do I have the stones to put this up in the air in this fog, knowing that I might not be able to find my way back? I do have the stones because that iceberg looks absolutely fantastic against the backdrop of this misty mountain. Just brilliant. And the waves look like they're crashing up against the iceberg. But I guess I'd better put some coal in this thing. It's not gonna go very far with that, is it? So I'll shovel a bit of coal in and get it up in the air. And then I'll try and talk you through a little bit of compositional ideas. 
Okay, so I've sent my drone out into the ocean so that I can shoot this iceberg, but looking back towards this mountain that's just over there. And I shot this earlier and it, I got this brilliant pano, but I messed up. I didn't shoot quite as wide enough of a composition as I should have done. And it was brilliant because the waves were crashing up against the iceberg right as it was sat in front of this massive mountain. And I'm, yeah, it's pretty similar right now. It's, ch it's changed its angle though. So the composition's changed again. So <laughs> it's, it's a bit frustrating. So I'm just gonna, I'll put it in cine mode, drop the drone a little bit to about here. And then I'm just gonna creep in a little bit. Oh, look at that wave, absolutely fantastic. So what I'm trying to do with this shot is, I'll just pan back out. Where I messed up earlier, is I did a pano, but I just didn't give myself enough cropping space on either side. So if I just kind of pan around it, I went over to this side on my right, took that shot, went into the middle here, took that shot, and went over there and took that shot. And it just, it just wasn't wide enough. I was missing off the bottom of the actual iceberg. So now I've just angled this up ever so slightly so that I can see that mountain in the shot. And I'm gonna get a bit closer. That'll do. I'll do another sweep. So it's gonna go all the way across to like that. And I'm making that same mistake again now, look. See the bottom of the iceberg is cut off. So I'm gonna to have to back up just a little bit. There we go, give myself a little bit more room. Now I'll do another sweep again. So I'm doing two sweeps just to make sure that I'm not gonna mess this up. Okay, so I'm gonna start over here. I'll switch it into stills mode. Let's just change the settings, a little bit underexposed. Now that's a little bit underexposed. I kinda of want it a little bit underexposed. Oh, look at that wave, fantastic. Just I don't wanna blow out the highlights. So that's gonna be in my far right position. I'll do three shots. And what I'm doing with each shot, I'm just gonna shoot multiple positions of the wave because when I do the pano, each frame, I want to have that same, roughly that same wave position so that it stitches together nicely. So I'm gonna to have to kind of hover, oh, look at that, in this spot until I've got three versions of the same frame. Then I'll move to the next frame. Okay, that'll do. So now, you look at my, my rule of thirds grid. If you look at that right vertical, I'm gonna move it now, oh, look at that. I'm gonna move it so that it's now where my left vertical is. So turn the drone in this direction. Oh, look at that wave. And I think it was about there. So I'm just gonna take this shot. I'm gonna shoot this three times till I get a nice wave action on it. Oh, bloody freezing. That cat's sniffing over by the camper. Oh, look at that, that's nice. One more. There's a really friendly cat that just lives next door and uh, I just want to cuddle it. I, I really miss me cats. I, I can't even tell you how much I miss them. Oh, she's coming over. There we go. Okay, that was pretty good. So now I'm gonna move the drone over to the left to about there and wait for those wave positions. Hold on. Where's the kitty? She's behind you, but you can't turn around because then you'll mess up your... your you filming? Here we go, there's a wave coming in now. Oh wow, look at that business. So when you do a pano like this, you end, it's because of the waves, right? If, I, if it wasn't for the motion that's going on, I wouldn't have to wait around like this. I could literally just do it with three frames, but because I'm trying to get that same motion in each section of these frames, I'm having to wait for the wave to do something similar. And now it's just not playing ball. Oh, here we go, here's a, here's a wave. I didn't jab it hard enough on that one. One more. Here's another one. Okay, that'll do. Now I've got my frames in the camera, in the drone. Let's see if they stitch together. As the fog got heavier, I had just enough time to get one last shot before the drone 
could no longer even see. Have you ever wanted to watch ad-free episodes before they go on YouTube, plus exclusive content and critique videos? You might like my Patreon page. So this is home for the night. It's pretty nice, isn't it? Look at that. We've got the whole place to ourselves, middle of nowhere. Really quiet, tranquil. I think we'll have a good night's sleep tonight. Join us next week when the icebergs just get bigger and weirder. Now, did I mention you can get your very own signed copy of my new book, Stories Within Stories by Gavin Hardcastle? No? Oh, well, there is a link in the description below. Oh, and look at all these absolute legends. Thanks for all your support so that I can keep making this content. And thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.